The previous episode 12 had ended with Kafka who had to prove himself that he was not a threat to humans by fighting against Isao Shinomiya, the user of Kaiju power number two. Until after Kafka showed Isao that he could control his Kaiju mode. In the end, the decision on the punishment that would determine Kafka's life had been temporarily postponed on the condition that Kafka had to become a fighting force in the next war against the Daikaiju. But without anyone realizing it, at the same time Kaiju number 9 has also risen again to seize the power of the Kaiju that fell into human hands. The story continues by showing Kokoro who was surprised by the appearance of a first division vice captain named Iji Hasegawa while he was still in the waiting room. Hasegawa said he was the one who would deliver Kokoro to the first division captain's room, who is none other than Narumi Jen. From now on, Kokoro will be entrusted to the first division defense forces until the Tachikawa base is repaired. Kokoro, who already knows that the first division is Japan's strongest army in dealing with kaiju, then she becomes very confident that this place is the best place to hone his skills, and she is determined to learn all the things that can be learned from the captain of the strongest army in Japan. But unexpectedly by Kokoro, shortly after they had arrived at Narumi's room, the captain of the first division defense force, suddenly Kokoro was surprised by Narumi who was playing games in the middle of him dirty and messy room. Hasegawa, who was embarrassed to see how messy Narumi's room was, he spontaneously closed the door again and asked Kokoro to wait outside for a while. While he himself went back inside to kick Narumi's ass without caring that Narumi was his captain. From that incident, of course, has made Narumi very angry because Hasegawa also damaged his PS. But regardless of Narumi's anger, here Hasegawa actually scolded Narumi because he had not cleaned his room even though Hasegawa had told him that there would be guests coming at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Narumi replied that he had heard about it, but whether he would obey or not was up to him. Hearing that, suddenly Hasegawa kicked Narumi once again for he annoying attitude, even though Narumi also warned Hasegawa again that this was him room, so it was up to him what he wanted to use. Hasegawa still doesn't care about Narumi's warning because this room doesn't belong to Narumi, but to the defense forces. Long story short, after an argument between the two of them about this messy room, a moment later Kokoro re-entered the room to be introduced to Narumi. Kokoro did not know how she should behave to Narumi because this was his first meeting with Narumi. According to Kokoro, Narumi did not look like a person worthy of respect at all until after Narumi asked Kokoro, was Kokoro the son of the much talked about Aisao? Finally, Kokoro realized that he could not behave carelessly because Narumi was still his superior despite his appearance. Kokoro then saluted Narumi while introducing herself that she was Kokoro Shinomiya from Division 3. Starting today, she was assigned to Division 1 and she was ready to carry out all orders from Narumi. In response, Narumi then also told Kokoro not to be too serious. Narumi doesn't need a stiff greeting like that, but he just wants to ask one thing from Kokoro as a member of Division 1. But before Narumi had time to convey what he asked Kokoro, suddenly they were surprised by the notification of a kaiju attack. Knowing that, Narumi immediately smiled and said to Kokoro that the timing was perfect. Narumi wanted Kokoro to understand what he said earlier through the battle of the first division troops, and he allowed Kokoro to observe them from the front seat. Here it can be seen that the kaiju moving towards Tokyo Bay has passed the first layer of the anti-kaiju wall and is moving north. The first division defense forces seem to have faced the kaiju first. At this time, the evacuation order has been issued. For the Kawasaki District, Kanagawa District, and Nisi District, First Division Vice Captain Hasegawa then launched his attack on the Kaiju using his combat equipment. He ordered the first artillery squad to open fire on the Kaiju's left side, followed by the sixth artillery squad to open fire on its right side, while Kokoro watched from the helicopter. The great teamwork carried out by the 1st Division troops made Kokoro became impressed with their prowess, 
which was able to fully control the kaija's direction of motion. Kakura thought the reason they were able to do so must be because each of its members had high abilities. Even Kokoro also guessed that each member of this troop must have a combat power release above 40%, where it could be equivalent, or even above a squad leader. Notified that the Kaiju had been successfully led to the point of the extermination plan, Naromi, who was also preparing for battle, then said to Kokoro, Kokoro Shinomiya, manners, appearance, diligence and self-respect, I don't ask for any of that from you. Then as Narumi jumps from the helicopter and immediately prepares his weapon to attack the kaiju he is targeting, right after the kaiju's body explodes and shatters into pieces. Arrogantly, Narumi also continued his words to Kokoro that all he asked was one thing, namely show absolute strength because he didn't need a good boy who had no ability. Kokoro who heard it then smiled while answering. Interesting too. Finally, Kokoro could see the absolute strength of Narumi Gen, the strongest kaijo exterminator warrior in Japan. And from now on, Kokoro will also give proof with absolute power. A few days later, after the kaiju attack, with a strength scale of 7.2, news about the victory of the 1st Division troops began to be published in the newspaper, but what made Narumi so upset was why on the front page there was even a photo of Mina, as if it was Min who had defeated the kaiju. Narumi then asked Kokora to see the news from the cell phone. She still didn't accept that Mina became a trending topic, even though it was clear that she was the one who defeated the kaiju. Yes. Again, Kokoro again saw the other side of Narumi's attitude, which was inversely proportional to when she was fighting. Kokoro then tried to tell Narumi that her communication device had been ringing since earlier, but why Narumi didn't answer it. Narumi replied that it didn't matter, because he was sure it was just a boring meeting call with Hasegawa and Aisao. According to Narumi, they always talk about difficult things with a scary face. Narumi also said, why else would he have to go to that hell-like suffocating place at this time of day? Suddenly, Narumi was immediately surprised by Hasegawa who kicked him while answering, because it is your duty. Then Hasegawa dragged Narumi to join the meeting with him. Narumi asked what important conversation there was to drag him, until after Hasegawa told him that it was about Kaija number 8. Narumi finally complied, and the scene changed to Kafka who was currently doing push-ups in his room, and it had been five days since Kafka was here, and he couldn't do anything. Kafka who remembered the words of Aisao who told him to prove that he was useful, then asked what he should do, but clearly he was willing to do everything for the friends who had trusted him. A moment later Kafka was picked up by a group of defense members to meet Aisao, there were Narumi, Kokoro, and Hasegawa who had arrived first. Kafka, who saw Narumi, the captain of the 1st Division, also there, was again confused until after Aisao told Kafka that from now on he would join the 1st Division. Suddenly Kafka was very surprised and did not expect why Aisao suddenly made that decision. Aisao Shinomiya explained that the reason he told Kafka to join the 1st Division was because he wanted to form the strongest army that could face all kinds of kaiju disasters, namely by combining the strongest kaiju force in history with the strongest monster extermination army in Japan. This was the opportunity given by Aisao to Kafka. So Aisao wanted Kafka to show his strength and prove to everyone in the next extermination mission. Until now, Kafka actually didn't want to be needed as Kaiju number 8, but in order to survive, Kafka was forced to accept it. On the other hand, Narumi stated that he rejected Aisao's decision, because if it was all about the strongest troops. According to Narumi, as long as there is him in the 1st Division troops, it should be enough. After saying that, Narumi immediately excused himself from there without further consideration, but when Narumi heard Aisao who said that it will not be enough, suddenly Narumi immediately stopped him steps to listen to Aisao's explanation again. Aisao explained, Kaiju number 9 was able to hide himself by disguising himself as a human. In addition, 
With the existence of Kaiju Number 10, who is able to command other Kaiju to attack the defense forces. According to Aisao, the two Kaiju are different from the Kaiju they have faced so far. Aisao admits that although every day they always make progress and succeed in dealing with various Kaiju disasters, in fact the Kaiju also continue to evolve and show abilities that they do not know. According to him, the so-called big disaster will actually occur on a scale far beyond common sense, when they have become complacent and feel able to face everything. So that's why Aisao wants them to also continue to evolve. Hearing that, Narumi immediately sighed and then answered while looking at Kafka. Narumi said, It turns out that Aisao's level of trust in him is only limited to that, but he thinks it would be more effective if Kaiju number 8 was used as a weapon and given to him. Kafka, who heard it, suddenly felt slapped by Narumi's words just now. But since Kafka has a strong mentality and never gives up, Kafka also immediately responded to Narumi's words by saying, Captain Narumi, I still can't die. There are still things I have to do, and I can't die before I succeed in doing it, so that's why I will continue to survive. Hearing that, Narumi turned around to leave the room while saying, she is not interested in Kafka's feelings, situation, or statement of determination. Narumi only wants Kafka to show his abilities and deliver results for him, but if Kafka shows signs of being out of control again, then Narumi will immediately finish Kafka at that time. Then turned Kafka into his combat suit. Kafka, who heard it, did not feel daunted at all by Narumi's threat, even though he himself also knew that Narumi would not mess around with this matter. With his strong determination, Kafka would still continue his struggle, and he thanked Narumi for giving him the opportunity to join the 1st Division Defense Force.